Hi everybody, we're the we're the Goomba crew. The Goomba gang is here. We're definitely not the bandwagon team. <laughs> not a completely different group of people. <laughs> okay, well hello. <laughs> hello, my my name is Wilfred. Uh, my name is Janine. I'm Marble, so I had a mouthful of peach, so I didn't <laughs> <laughs> I'm Steve O. Oh, this is going great. Yeah. Um this is the level. <laughs> oh man, we have like no plan. <laughs> so this is just a short video to kind of explain some of the more interesting setups uh, in this level. I uh, would just want to keep it brief and talk about like the really cool stuff, the really cool things and tricks we had to do to make this level possible. We're going to aim to keep this video less than eight minutes long. You will be able to see how badly we failed at that right about now. <laughs> uh, but basically, we'll be doing a more in-depth live stream at some point in the coming weeks where we'll go over everything without skipping stuff. So the Goomba levels first started out with uh, Bearware's uh, This Really Be a Goomba Moment. I think that's what it was called. It, it just mm, had Goomba yeah. in it. Goomba Moment. It was just a level with a bunch of Goombas trolls. Yeah, it was just a Goomba themed level and it's just very memorable for being very simple and just slapstick and funny. So, you know, we, we had to make a level for 7MMC later down the line. Um, and we're thinking it's a level that's going to be part of, you know, this big event and a lot of people are going to see it and we want something that'll be appealing to a lot of people. Uh, so we threw around a lot of like gimmick ideas, um, but we eventually decided on the Goomba idea just because uh, everyone who is participating in the collab, it's actually a lot easier to come up with ideas when you're so restricted to just like one thing because you don't have to just like, you know, try to come up with an idea like that's good enough. You just have to place down a Goomba and see what you can do with it yeah. and just yeah. do something funny. So it actually makes it a lot easier to come up with ideas. Um, so we ended up coming up with a lot of ideas for the Goomba, the original Goomba level. Far too many, in fact. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> A lot of ideas. Um, so part, so one thing with the original Goomba level was that it was it had to be glitch-free for the event. Um, so we ended up coming up with a lot of glitched Goomba trolls that we just couldn't use. And then there was also just a lot of leftover non-glitched Goomba trolls that we didn't have enough space for in the level. So eventually we were like, okay, let's just make another one. Because we have all these, uh, these Goomba trolls just lying around. Put them together. So here we are. This level. Beautiful. Goomba Eternal. All right, so let's go into the level. Anyway, the level. Okay, so due to the huge amount of content in this level, um, it was pretty obvious that two checkpoints wasn't enough. So our options at that point were make it a red coin level or do some fancy trickery with some ELB checkpoints. Or we could have used knowledge checkpoints, but those are lame and cringe. <laughs> I like knowledge <laughs> checkpoints. But those take up space and we do not have space in this level. Like, <laughs> no. It if you scroll packed. through the subworld, there is not a single tile of space you can save. It cannot be condensed a single tile. Like everything has a purpose. Anyway, so we the first workable version of this level was put together by Stevo, and that had three checkpoints. And at some point I stole a copy of the level because we were still <laughs> working on emulator at that point. And I thought, hey, there's still quite a lot, and even with three checkpoints, it's a bit lengthy. And I also have an idea for a cool Goomba ride thing where you get stun locked on top of a boot. So I kind of added that in and uh, CP4 was born. So what this new 4 CP structure adds up to is basically a level with only maybe 7 or 8 trolls per checkpoint section. And that reduces the run back time, which is the amount of time from respawn till you get back to where you were to a level that it still feels relatively fun to play because you're not running back through the level quite as much. Yeah, playthroughs for this usually don't go over an hour. Yeah, playthroughs for this is around yeah. 50 minutes. And uh, this is one of the reasons that we could justify doing guts in this level, <laughs> which is, I guess, what everyone probably wants to know about, <laughs> <laughs> is because the run back is actually fairly short. Each section is pretty short. You can get back to where you were without too much hassle. So the CP ones feel actually fun and funny rather than soul crushing and time wasting as they often do if you're not careful. We've also paced it so that trolls with longer wait times uh, tend to be towards the end of checkpoint sections. So you're not gonna spend like 10 seconds waiting for a P-switch to end right after you've respawned every time, for example. Let's talk about this checkpoint first because this one is more of the standard setup. 
So this checkpoint, when you respawn at it at first, it's just a regular checkpoint, and then when you respawn again, you get the red coin and go the other way. So this works kind of the way it normally does, is that you have a red coin right under the checkpoint so that it fills the entity limit from collecting it and changes the level. But in this case, you'd usually have a bunch of one ways to fill the ELB, but instead here we have a spike ball at the bottom that gets teleported by a thinks it's in a claw pow, and it hits a row of note blocks along the bottom of the level, and that is spawns a bunch of stuff to fill up the entity limit. But because those things are like spawning into walls or they're far away, they despawn instantly, and that allows you to check ELB and then not affect the level at all. Yep, and the coin has to be collected before you get the checkpoint. And in this case, it's collected off screen by this shell that you kick. It goes on a magical journey all the way through here, underneath this pipe and up through here, up through this bridge and grabs the red coin for you. And you can see the shell collect that coin if you like go fast and pay attention. Let's move on to CP1 slash CP4 next. Yeah, so, um. Normally, to do a checkpoint swap, you need a red coin at or near the checkpoint that you can use to make it different when you respawn. In this case, the ELB coin is all the way over here at the beginning of the level. It's the fake safety coin. And the way that it gets collected is that there's a block right here, and the shell that you kick right after the checkpoint teleports through all of these note blocks and hits this block collecting the coin. These note blocks are filled with clouds, which will temporarily saturate the ELB, um, with the exception of this one that has a POW, so that we end up at ELB maximum minus one. 99. And that way, when you respawn here after key deathing, it is different from when you spawn here after having collected the safety coin, which you can't avoid at the beginning. Normally, when you're doing ELB checks, you need to be very careful about exactly how many entities are spawned or not. In this case, we can't because this boot Goomba might have despawned off the bottom of the screen. But the way that we're doing ELB is able to fill the ELB up to one under the limit instantly. So it actually doesn't matter how many entities are spawned uh, because we take care of that with an instantaneous note block spawn. A buffer. Uh, let's just talk about the, the intangible Goomba first. There's so much I want to say about this, but I know I need to keep it brief. Um, when we were making the original Goomba, I think it was Fifth Knight found that, um, Goombas that split off don't actually damage you, but once they land on the ground, they become real Goombas again, and they, you, they can damage you, and, uh, you can bounce off of them. Um, but what I found is that if you launch them up with a seesaw, it doesn't count as them, uh, going on the ground. Uh, so they just get launched up into the air in this intangible state. So that's how, uh, this intangible Goomba works. Uh, you split off a Goomba while it's still falling, and the sea thumb makes it so that Goomba never touches the ground. With stunning, you can't be stunned if you're already in the stunning animation. So the way the stun lock setups work is that they're all timed so that the sledge bro hits again exactly when your previous stun runs out so you can't escape. What we have here is we have to transfer you from being stunned by one sledge bro to being stunned by a different sledge bro. So we have to get a frame perfect timing for the second sledge bro to hit exactly when the last one runs out. The problem we found with this is getting it exactly frame perfect consistently is really rather difficult and we still haven't managed it in this level although it's it's almost perfect. So we had to add a layer of redundancy where the sledge bros get killed after they are no longer useful so that if you did manage to get off the Goomba and you're just sitting somewhere stun locked for all eternity uh, we can like get you out of it after a while. Okay, so the next thing on the list is the launcher swap, which is, you know, probably what most people care about the most. So, how did we swap this launcher? This launcher is a shellnet launcher. The launcher that shoots boots is over here. This is a boot launcher. This POW goes off a broken track and push teleports this launcher up to this switch block. I put some switch blocks here so you can see uh, it happening a little bit better. This launcher goes off a broken track and gets carry teleported to this spot. And both of those things happen at the exact moment that these uh, platforms load, which is when you go over this gap. It's actually really seamless. Yeah. 
So, um, we argued a lot about this <laughs> mushroom. <laughs> yeah, just throw that in the video. <laughs> Is that a random point? Okay, so the wizardry you're seeing right now is a grounded Goomba. And it's actually the same Goomba that you threw down the chute right at the beginning of this room. When you throw Goombas with SMB2 Mushroom, they have a little spinning animation whilst they're mid-air. And if you ground the Goomba whilst it's still doing this spinning thing, it will continue spinning even after landing. So the stuff that in the bottom left of this room is a bunch of contraptions that ground the Goomba and keep it spawned whilst you're doing other stuff later in the room. And we basically just shoot it over to you when the time is right to block your path. Everyone gets confused here and thinks that we do some kind of twice twice, but it's just because you waited too long and the boot despawned. <laughs> um, we're not going to talk about this setup today because it sucks and I hate it and clown cars are stupid and bad and you should never use them for position detectors ever. We spent about four hours in a Discord call trying to troubleshoot this contraption at one point. <laughs> it was like the third time I ruined this call. <laughs> 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 yes, I, I, I can think of exactly three distinct times. Uh, these Goombas are detached pipe Goombas. They think that they're in pipes. The pipes that they are in are over here. And while you're in this room, the ELB is filled in such a way that only one of them can spawn. And once you kill one Goomba, the ELB gets freed up by one space, meaning another Goomba can spawn. And if you kill 100, you get a key. <laughs> it's really hard though, I've never done it. So this thing is black hole glitch lets you do weird things. And so that is a boot that spawns from a pipe, but instead of being in a pipe, it's in a clown car. And what that means is that it like spawns, but doesn't fully spawn. So when you jump on it, it dies, but then it's dead, but it's still in the clown car. And that's what you see here. The clown car binds it to this earthly realm so it can't fall off the screen as it usually would. So it just like kind of hangs around there, spinning. Um, so how do we keep this pipe from spawning a spring until you walk right up to it? So the way it works is that pipe can only spawn one spring at a time. It spawns its first spring right as the player enters the door. If you look in the top right as you come out the door, the pipe is just visible, meaning it can spawn a spring. That first spring immediately gets teleported over to the left here, and that place it teleports is positioned just right so that it despawns right as the player is walking towards the pipe, allowing a second spring to spawn to replace the first one which despawned. This is all just some dumb sh that works. This entire section uses one sprite and it's that launcher. That's pretty cool, right? <laughs> This didn't happen to a lot of people, but if you run here and try to hold up, you cannot grab that vine. <laughs> yeah, because you can't grab vines while going up, and when you like hit your head against the slope, uh, it pushes you down, but the game still thinks you're going up, so it doesn't let you grab the vine. <laughs> it's really stupid. I'm, I'm holding up. I'm holding up here the entire time. <laughs> and... And that pit has sound effects in it specifically for that interaction. Yes. <laughs> Many people figure this out, but this is in fact a non-tracked spring sitting on a tracked spring with a tracked hidden block behind it. So a fun thing about collabs is that we always hopelessly run out of sprites. It was the case in Wagon World and it's been the case here. So when we run out of sprites, we have to do some creative techniques to kind of like save sprites to use them elsewhere in more important places. And the main way of doing that is to put items in blocks instead of just placing them where they count as a sprite. So we have a lot of crazy sprite saves, but uh, this one this one takes the cake as our craziest. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> also, a fun thing I had to do with this contraption is you'll see the fireball bouncing around in there. I had to make the contraption do what I wanted, but I also had to shape all the blocks in there so that the fireball bounced around for an exact period of time before going up top and killing the sledge bro up there. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> those angles? <laughs> oh my god, Marble. No, it missed. It didn't even kill the guy. 
That also happened a few times, <laughs> but in the real thing, it does always hit the sledge. This was all trial and error, and it took about maybe three hours of just changing one thing and then waiting two minutes to figure out if that made it shorter or longer. <laughs> oh my god. We'll be doing a much more in-depth live stream at some point in the future, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, and if you haven't played it, it's on Open Course World right now. Yeah, you should go play it on Open Course World because Nintendo can't delete stuff there. Woo, yay. True. Yay. And thank you so much for playing and or watching our level. Bye. If you're not playing this level, you're going to turn into a... Goomba.